take three. All right. All right. So where were we? Talking about... Your show that you're never on. That's right. Your name's all over the internet, and you're never on your show, so... Welcome to your show. It's very good to be here. <laughs> the topic of the day is food. What to eat, because we have no time to eat, right? And we all have this hectic schedule. Very, very hectic. <laughs> Woman of many words again. <laughs> so, a week ago, a couple weeks ago, you got back from Monterey, California, right? Yes, I did. And for our listeners who are just tuning in for the first time or are on some other planet, Shantae here is pursuing a PhD in, can you pronounce it for me? Cause it's I'm going to be happy, Applied Psychophysiology. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, sir. The funny thing, going through chiropractic school, you couldn't understand my words. Now I have no freaking clue what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. It's a crap ton of words that I'm questioning. So, I see what you do during the day. You got three kids in the morning. Three children. You've got functionized. Yes. You've got mommy Uber in the afternoons. Every day. I hear people like to eat. Yeah. You, you do that cooking thing from time to time, too, which is... Very nice of you, greatly appreciated. Ah. Oh, and you got goals, you, physical goals, so you're in the gym as well. Yes. Thankfully, you've been more efficient using the ARX, vibe plate, and your mad scientist coaches me uh, program, right? It has tied, or freed up, I should say, a lot more time with this new program. I don't know if you're able to take a look at your results from the last uh, couple months, but holy jeez, you're a different person. I have not had the opportunity to review my numbers. Take a look, I was flabbergasted. I mean, just in what we're doing, you are so much stronger than you have ever been working out in the gym, pushing six days a week, so. I feel nice strong, work. thank you, I do feel stronger. Until we're working together, right? Then do you, well, feel, yes. then you feel weak, right? <laughs> So, just let's go on our little tangent like we like to from time to time. All right. When we are training together, do you feel stronger in those sessions or do you feel weak as anything in those sessions? With the ARX? Mm hmm. I feel weak as anything <laughs> in those sessions. <laughs> so, with you feeling weak in those sessions, um, is it worth feeling that way if you know that? Objectively, you're seeing greater strength gains each and every time. It is, because there's always room for improvement. It seems like it's a mind screw, because you're going to get, it, it's difficult, but at the same time, you are improving. And well, it's, it's tough to actually feel the improvement, where, you know, you bench press. You know that you're lifting that heavier plates, you do it one time, Congratulations. With the ARX, you've, it's a motor that is pulling against you. It's a different workout every week. It might be the same machine, but the output, the input, it's a different workout every week. And some days you feel stronger going into it, and then after round one, it knocks you on your butt, and you're <laughs> like, holy crap. <laughs> so for anybody that wants to give it a whirl, Come visit us at Functionized, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N-I-S-E-D dot com. Set up a complimentary appointment and see if working with Coach Jim is right for you. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Only if you actually want to get somewhere. Because I have actually, believe it or not, don't jump across the table at me here, been turning people down to work with me lately. Um, I say that because... Not everyone's ready. Not everyone wants to do it. And if you're not ready to put forth the commitment and the effort, then what are we doing? So if you're not ready for it, to make changes in your life that are positive, then I'm not mad at you. When you're ready, you let me know. But if you are ready, it's not necessarily going to be easy all the time, but we'll do it together. Give, you, give us six months, and I put your money where my mouth is. Give it all back if it doesn't actually work. And it works. It straight up works every time. That's why I'm so confident in it. As you should be. 
And with you, more trophies would be nice. I want medals this time. <laughs> <laughs> Big, fat, heavy medal. So in your endeavors, day-to-day -day endeavors, wake up, OMG, what just happened? I'm laying in bed again. Kids are accounted for. No one is hurt. And I think I fed them. And there's enough dirt off the faces. We're good. Homework is done. Um, where do you find time to eat? And what do you eat? Because you, I don't want to say you eat special food, but you're more cognizant of what you eat than most of the general public. And your habits have been formed better and continuing to evolve and form better coming from mom of three to, hey, look at me. So what do you do? There's definitely been a transformation and a growing period with eating and making sure that I take the time to not only feed the children and my very hungry husband, mm. um, <laughs> but myself as well. The biggest thing is planning. You know, definitely making sure that I have snacks of some kind with me in the car and not snacks like a Snickers bar. <laughs> snacks meaning a bag of raw pecans or almonds that, you know, grab a handful, try to make sure I eat every three hours. Using the MyPlate app has definitely been a big help to see the breakdown of the foods that I am eating. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I might have, uh, and I'm still very much into intermittent fasting. So my first meal of the day is typically between 11 and 1 o'clock. I don't wake up hungry. I need my caffeine. If I don't have my coffee, that's a whole other story. But I'm not hungry when I wake up and just kind of move on from there. So the reason that so many people wake up hungry as you're saying, is because at nighttime, individuals will have meals that are high in sugar. They'll have, would it be some type of sugary alcohol, they'll have some type of dessert. That's when people typically like to indulge and gorge the most. So with that, there becomes that, as we've gone over in this podcast so many times, that insulin spike, and when there's a crash, they become hypoglycemic. So in the morning, they need to raise the levels again, so what do they do? They get that hunger pangs and they need to eat. Fortunately for you, you seem to not eat sugar right before you go to bed. Would that be correct? That would be correct. If anything, uh, the other night I had a pretty big serving of brisket before I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to get those extra proteins and, um, and some brain food for working on my research papers. So, as we know, it's not about so much when you eat, unless you are a highly trained Olympic athlete who's looking for the extra tenth of a second. The nutrient timing is really not as big a deal, says the research, in real science versus bro science or gym science. So, the idea of eating every three hours has kind of been disproven, but there seems to be a purpose for individuals such as yourself. So why do you like to eat every three hours? Well, it depends on the day, knowing that I have limited amounts of time and need to get in that hour long slow cardio with that weight vest, which I'm just so thrilled about. You're that welcome. Is, that is later <laughs> today, folks, later today. Um, so to be able to have a little bit more in the tank at times, um, just really to help with cognition other times. But really, I think it's just gotten to the habit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many people will not eat all day, and they're not intermittent fasting, they're just starving themselves. They've got the coffee, they've got the toast, and they're out the door, they come back at night, and they are famished. What do they do? They gorge. What can I eat? What's going to satisfy me the quickest? Let's grab the pasta, let's grab the breads, there's the cookies, there's the cake, you know, whatever it is. Denied as they may, that's what happens. It's been found, a lot of individuals such as yourself, it kind of satiates you throughout the day. So at the end of the day, you're not gorging, you are having your last small little meal of 
what you need to get in for the day and that's that. Would that kind of be correct the way you feel? Absolutely. There's no sense of urgency to eat, to cram it all in, you know, and gorge, if you will, to make sure that, you know, I'm not hungry right now. It's just a balanced mm -hmm. day. So, riddle me this. What do you eat? Let's be specific, because I am getting a plethora of individuals literally direct messaging us, coming into the office and saying, what do you eat? Where do we get these wonderful special foods from? I love the, the notion of special foods. <laughs> so, what do you eat? Give me some examples every couple hours. Take me through a day. I mean, what have you had today and what are you planning on kind of for the rest of the day and how is it going to shape up for you? Uh, well, so far today I have had my coffee with unsweetened almond milk creamer. Mm -hmm. I plan to eat about four pieces of bacon very soon. Free range, of course. Free range bacon. I love bacon. Uh, bacon is something you can kind of, if it's prepared already ahead of time, you can kind of take that with you in a box, can't you? I absolutely do sometimes take it in a box with me. Thank you very I much. see the box right us. there. <laughs> if I get home from the gym, I oh, just for our will typically... Viewers. Oh, there we go. Bacon mm -hmm. in a box. I love scrambled eggs with cheese. I throw a little bit of heavy creamer in just to get some extra fats mm -hmm. in there. That, that's one of my go-tos is scrambled eggs with cheese. Um, and now then I love throwing some spinach in there as well. Hard-boiled eggs, can't go wrong with those. You boil them on a Sunday, you're good for the week. We've done that plenty of times. Boil them, dry them off, fill them up into the carton again, label it. Yes. So you're not uh, making scrambled eggs and get something wrong or vice versa. Yes, yes, labeling is key. Mm -hmm. String cheese, whole milk string cheese. You know, it's a quick, easy snack that I can take with me anywhere I go. Nuts, love pecans, love walnuts, mm -hmm. almonds. Those are usually some of my go-to snacks. Sounds phenomenal. It is. So, what other types of go-to snacks have you had? I mean, you talk about different nuts that you'll have throughout the day, um, bars from time to time? I do enjoy the Quest bars. Mm -hmm. um, I will eat them maybe once to two times a week. The white chocolate raspberry and the oatmeal chocolate chip happen to be my favorites. You've got to find what you like. But they have amazing flavors um, and they do leave you quite satisfied. The protein cookies. Those are nice at night if you need a little bit extra and you've got that sweet tooth that you just can't get rid of. And I've noticed the bars and the cookies by Quest, the nutrient breakdown is like the same. So it's pretty much, it seems like they're taking the same mold and just cooking it differently at the end of the day. How would you like to eat it? Right. Put the cookie in the microwave for 10, 15 seconds, <laughs> it does help. <laughs> I think, isn't that when we took a uh, photo of you with the Halo Top ice cream? Like, it was a Halo Top ice cream and a Quest cookie, and it was the best of both worlds. <laughs> and that was after a very rigorous training week, right before my last competition. And I know that you've also done the free range jerky as well. I do. I do enjoy free range. Those are pretty good. Yes. And you take shakes and from time to time. Easy, just put it in the shaker and shake it and go with you. Unflavored whey protein. You can add it to pretty much anything. Have it with your water, right? That's what I did after the gym yesterday. Heavy lifting day, needed to get that protein in. Teaspoon or whatever cap full mm -hmm. into my water. There you go. Don't even know it's there. Now, where do you get all this wonderful, magical, special food? I told some of our uh, clients and patients here in the office that some of the things that I like to get since you know, I've got all the time in the world, I buy this stuff on Thrive Market, to which we're not affiliate of whatsoever, I just like their stuff. And it's easy, two days later it comes in a nice box for me and I'm good to go. So other than Thrive Market, where do you typically buy all of your magical, wonderful, special foods that keep you who you are? Whole Foods, 
is always an excellent source. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of Amazon. Yes, <laughs> yes, you are. And now that Amazon and Whole Foods have teamed up, it's nice, you know, scan your little Amazon app, and sometimes you get discounts at Whole Foods. Not, you know, plugging in here, but that's just you know very helpful for me. Um, in addition, you know, we're we're up here in New Jersey, and I like a lot of the items from Stop and Shop. Um, you know, Nature's Promise has very good foods that the kids love mm -hmm. um, that are easy. Okay. Going back a little bit, that uh, keto bark, that you get that from Amazon? I do, and they've been out of stock for Because we a probably while. bought them out of stock. That Choco Zero uh, keto barks are pretty fantastic. Bet you can't eat one box at a time, right? You can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the kids can either. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of the things to watch out for in these easy take go to fo foods are obviously sugars you know make sure that you know how to read a label the sugar alcohols they mess up your gut flora so might have been in a podcast but the slim fast or no atkins it was atkins. atkins bars they're delicious so bet you can't eat it one box when the side of the box says guaranteed weight loss you kind of get interested so you start thinking i can eat as many as possible so you have a glass of Fitvine Red with the chocolate pecan caramel, and it goes down so good and so quick. So if one's good, two's got to be even better, right? And that goes down just as easily. So one box later, it's gone. So you know the calories do add up, and maybe sleeping alone that night too. Just know that there. Watch out for the sugar alcohols. A lot of the health products throw sugar alcohols in to keep the sugar content down, the carbohydrate content down. With everything, moderation is key. Yeah. And look for the products. Uh, Allulose is looking to be pretty decent. So anything that is made by Guy Gun Keto, becoming a fan of it, definitely. The sauces are pretty fantastic. The sauces are good. Very good. I can't get enough of those. I keep popping them on every single podcast lately. I must like them. So we've got, oh, Target. You get stuff at Target too, don't you? I do. I do get a few things at Target. You know, our kids, we, we're we not soda drinkers. Never have been in the house. Kids would like seltzer water. Big fan of the Zevia drinks. Mm -hmm. I see CrossFit starting to now uh, promote the Zevia as well. Or, Zevia is paying CrossFit and CrossFit saying okay and endorsing it, yeah. But they're nice, you know, we call them special drinks for the kids, mm -hmm. you know, give them something different. Um, and kids, they see all the other ones drinking Sprite and Coke and this and that. And well, they, they taste delicious. They're great and they know, know any different and they look forward to it. They'll go in a special drink and that's what <laughs> we hold them for. You know, they're not everyday treats. Right. And they also do make mom and dad, whoever you may be out there that like an adult beverage from time to time, they make little tonic water mixers. A little bit of gin goes a long way, as well as the ginger beer. Oh my goodness. All right, so you go to a restaurant, you order a ginger beer, and it's like the Atkins bars. They're gone before you blink an eye. So like 10 later, it's like you never took a sip. I don't think they put alcohol in them. Uh, I even told the bartender the other night, remember? Yes. I, I asked I... her if she's even putting any Tito's in, and she kind of laughed at me. And then you had to explain that I don't have a problem. <laughs> he does. So, there's a lot of sugar though in that ginger beer, and they add up. So you can't really have too many if you're going out and wanting to monitor your sugar. I mean, even as we talked about on previous podcasts, your liver only holds 25 grams of sugar in the first place, so why, once you dump it, do you want to keep on putting it back? And what are you gonna do with the rest of that 25 grams in a day? It's gonna be stored, it's gonna create inflammatory spots. Right. So tangent coming full circle here, the ginger beer by Zevia, no sugar, flavored with pure stevia, tastes phenomenal. Add that with a little Tito's, add some little fresh ginger zest and some uh, organic lime, squeeze that in, throw that in. Uh, uh, yeah. Is it too early for, uh, <laughs> it sounds pretty good. It's always five o'clock somewhere. That and a uh, grass-fed burger right now? 
Yeah. yeah. Um, podcast wrapping up? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else do you get at Target? Because a lot of people think that I go to special places. And when I throw out Thrive, just for my personal convenience, literally everyone's on their phone, sign up for the Thrive app, sign up for Thrive accounts, and going crazy with Thrive. So, with me, it is not necessarily about having to go to a special place. It's to me purely about convenience and they have good products there and the prices are good. So I'm fine with Thrive. Target, great. Target's Whole Foods, great. great. Amazon, phenomenal. Your local grocery store, I'm sure ShopRite's good. Um, I'm sure Publix down in the south. I know they've got a lot of good stuff just from living yes, down there. Yeah. The giant stop and shop brand is good. Walmart, I'm sure, has got some stuff. So it's not exactly like you've got to go far. You just have to know what you're getting. Correct. And in what you're getting would have to be sticking to the basics, the simple stuff, right? Uh, nuts. Nuts. Limited amount of fruits, but get, two servings get a day. Berries, a day. You know, go with the darker fruits. You nut, green, leafy vegetables. Nut butters. If you're fine with dairy, the organic cheese sticks are great to take with you. Certain bars, Quest is fine. Um, it, it, it's really, I guess. We make it seem simple because we've been doing this for so long, but it's very confusing to a lot because I know they work long shifts where they're at. I'll bring up the nurses, for instance, because mm -hmm. I gave them credit earlier for inspiring this podcast. They are doing a full shift, and they have no time to eat, or right. they cannot eat. Kids in school, they cannot eat. They get scolded have not having eaten for six hours, and they get scolded for trying to have a handful of nuts Right. in class. Well, and in and, and today's society pretty much can't bring nuts to a school anymore. Right. So if the kids like a bar, then they can have a Quest bar of their favorite type and have it between class, you know. I remember I was not allowed to do that back in high school. And I had cross country meet right afterward. Before understanding ketogenic lifestyle, I thought you had to carb up and so it pretty much came to the point where my math teacher, final period, realized Jim is a good boy. He's not a troublemaker. He has a cross country meet and an hour from now. He hasn't eaten since 10 o'clock this morning, which was when my lunch was on those cross-country meet days. I'm going to let him eat that power bar in class and drink the Ultra Fuel. <laughs> so, sure enough, I would. I'd have the mixed berry power bar, a big old giant orange Ultra Fuel. And off he went. It's a good thing those days were nine miles. Three to warm up, three for the race, three to cool down, because all those carbs and sugar I was eating, oh my goodness. You know, if I had an endurance race, Today, it would definitely be going with some uh, exogenous ketones, mm -hmm. some water, uh, some amino acids, and... Don't skip out on the day. water. Yeah. Everybody needs it. Mm -hmm. Drink it. Uh, speak. It's another thing. Um, aminos are good. Aminos are great. A lot of people have... When I'm getting screenshots individuals are sending me as I'm doing nutritional coaching with them in order to help them achieve their goals, one, it holds them accountable. And two, it gives me an idea of WTF. So when somebody is not eating enough protein, I can see it. Right. And people typically lack protein and fat. Mostly, believe it or not, protein. And then there's the others that just eat way too much of it. I mean, there's no real happy medium. Mm -hmm. So by having an amino acid drink, which is, I do like the old day you may. I know it does have the sucralose in it, which is,